Translation Theory 1 Introduction Until 20th century, translation theory floated freely between free and faithful models of translation. In the second half of the century, we witness intensification in construction of theoretical framework through which to view translation, courtesy to the emergence of structuralist and post-structuralist theories in literature. Explicating the possibility of a complete theory of translation, Lawrence Venuti in Translation Studies Reader, 1992, quotes Lewis Kelly, who believed that such a theory has three components, specification of function and goal, description and analysis of operations, and critical comment on relationships between goal and operations. Kelly rightly believes that throughout history, theorists have fallen back on one of these components to articulate their theoretical frameworks. Venuti makes a strong case for the autonomy of translation. By autonomy, he means the features of the translated text that set it apart both from the source text and other texts originally written in target language. He relates autonomy to other two notions of equivalence and function and pins down the history of translation theory to the changing relationship of autonomy of translation or translator and equivalence and function. He describes these notions in following terms. Equivalence busies itself with the extent to which a translation achieves highly abstract and elusive notions of accuracy, correspondence, fidelity and adequacy. Function measures the diverse effects that translation unleashes ranging from communication of information and production of response in target culture to accomplishment of social, cultural, economic and political agendas. In 50s and 60s of the 20th century, when the linguistic approaches to translation dominated the autonomy of translation is seen to be harnessed by an obsessive attention to the principle of correspondence and equivalent effect. On the other hand, with the cultural turn in translation studies in 70s and 80s, the focus shifted to functionalism and the translation's autonomy began to be viewed in the light of the function fulfilled in target society and culture by it. Given below is a sparing account of all the major theoretical insights that we get in what is called the modern era of translation theory. Richard's concept of complete viewing. In his book Contemporary Translation Theories, 2001, Edwin Gensler writes that the early modern theory of translation was rooted into the theoretical paradigms of Russian formalism and American New Criticism. Both these schools looked upon unified meaning of a literary work as solely enshrined in the text dissociated from the social and cultural context which influence it. I. A. Richards was a most vocal proponent of this theory. His model suggested that the original message could be properly decoded and then recoded into another language. Richards still maintained that the literary scholar could develop rules as a means of solving a communication problem, arrive at perfect understanding and correctly reformulate that particular message. Ezra Pound's Theory of Luminous Details Pound imparted a distinct view to interpretation and translation of text by using the myth of Osiris, whose scattered limbs, when regathered, transformed him both the god of the dead and a source of renewed life. The reunited limbs burst forth into energy. Pound also looks upon translation as a way of recapturing patterned energy of language. He suggests three ways in which this can be accomplished. Melopia or the musical property. Phenophia or the visual property. Logophia or the dance of the intellect among words. Pound doesn't focus on the meaning of a translated text nor on those of isolated words. 
Instead, he stresses upon the rhythm, diction, movement of words, unconscious association and reverberation of sounds within words as testifying to the pattern energy of the source text to energize target language. Language Studies and Translation With all the theories up to Ezra Pound, translation was a distinctively a literary and aesthetic activity. But with the arrival of Noam Chomsky, J.C. Catford, Igun Nida, translation becomes associated with linguistics and thus gets a scientific base for investigation. To linguists, translation presupposes replacement of textual material at various levels of language. Catford writes, Translation is an operation performed on languages, a process of substituting a text in one language for a text in another. Clearly, then any theory of translation must draw upon a theory of language, a general linguistic theory. Theorists like Catford, Nida, Tabor, Pym and Kohler maintain that translation is predicated upon some kind of equivalence and further came up with typologies of equivalence focusing on the rank, word, phrase, sentence, text, at which equivalence is said to obtain or on the type of the meaning, denotative, connotative, pragmatic which was assumed to reside somewhere outside the language and held to be constant in translation. Equivalence was established on the basis of SL and TL words supposedly referring to the same object in the real world. Referential or denotative equivalence. SL and TL words triggering similar association in the minds of the native speakers of those languages. Connotative equivalence, SL and TL words being used in the same or similar context in their respective languages. Text normative equivalence, SL and TL words having the same effect on their respective readers. Pragmatic or dynamic equivalence, DE is based on the principle of equivalent effect. Nida gives the example of J.B. Phillips' rendering of Romans where idea of greeting with a holy kiss is translated as give one another a hearty handshake all round. SL and TL words having similar orthographical or phonological features, formal equivalence which focuses on the message itself in both form and content. In such a translation, one is concerned with such correspondence as poetry to poetry, sentence to sentence and concept to concept. Concept of equivalence, Igin Nida. Nida and Tabor define translation as the reproduction in a receptor language of the closest natural equivalent of the source language message, first in terms of meaning and second in terms of style. Nida distinguishes between two types of equivalence between two languages. Formal equivalence or correspondence is that quality of a translation in which the features of the form of the source text have been mechanically reproduced in the receptor language. Dynamic equivalence, which is a quality of a translation in which the message of the original text has been so transported into the receptor language that the response of the receptor is essentially like that of original receptors. Linguistic approach to translation fell into disuse primarily because of its inability to address the problem of meaning which was scarcely structured and in any case unobservable. Moreover, meaning is always derived in certain context and part of it is lost when the context is altered.